Who's up guys, I'm Seaborg from Seaborg Productions and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be unboxing the Dezo Six Sided Puzzle. So just before I start, I got this at the Dezo store near me, kind of. It's like kind of like a dollar store uh, from Japan, almost. It's interesting. And they sold this there. So I got it for $1.50. Taking a look at the amazing quality box, you can see it says Dezo Japan Quality. Six sided puzzle for right brain training. Yeah, you can see that it's it, it packaged in this little plastic with this weird circle in the front. Now on the back just has some caution things. Anyways, let's just go ahead and get this open. I don't really care about this. High, yeah, totally high quality packaging. But yeah, so let's just go ahead and get that out of here. So now, looking at the puzzle, this is really light. Let me just grab a little scale real quick. So you can see that only weighs 39 grams, which is like insanely light, comparing that to an SM, for example. That is 77 grams, so far lighter. And you can see the amazing, nice sticker placement. You can see that they use the Japanese color scheme, obviously, because it's from Japan. This feels really low quality, but I got for a buck 50, so what do you expect? Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the turning. One turn, two turns. Oh my gosh. Oh man, this is bad. Let's just try a checkerboard real quick. There we go. So you can see a checkerboard with the Japanese color scheme looks rather interesting. These stickers are very poorly placed. Ooh, I can't, I'm actually kind of digging this checkerboard. That looks really cool. I'm, in, I'm curious, how cheap does this mechanism get? So you can see that they're not really even cut properly. They're kind of deformed almost, and it's completely hollow. These stickers feel really cheap as well. And taking a look at an edge, it's not even really a straight line, which I guess is fine, it works. It's just cheap, and again, it's completely hollow. I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and disassemble this whole thing to look at the core, because I have a feeling that this is gonna be pretty bad. I don't, I doubt they even use real screws. You can see there, I doubt they even have springs in here. You can see there, there's just a ton of flashing on that centerpiece. That's why it turns so bad. The core itself even turns horribly. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and assemble this and I'll see you guys again in a second. Time lapse! Okay, so I finally have it reassembled. Right, let's see if I can even get through a T-Burn. Okay, team perm complete, that took way too long. Let's actually time this and see how that works. Twenty-five point six oh six. I was literally able to do a T perm on this, and as long as it takes me to solve a three by three, <laughs> can't even finger trick this thing. I take that back. But if I like try to do a T perm with finger tricks, or even just a segzi. Anyways, that's it for this part of the video. I'm gonna go ahead and get into my summary. So, final thoughts. Huh. Well, I have broken all my PBs of this puzzle for worst time and worst average of five. But in all seriousness, do not buy this cube. This is even worse than like a Rubik's 2.0 or Rubik's 1.0, any Rubik's. This is the worst, easily the worst cube I've ever turned. The sticker placement is awful, the plastic is super cheap, the shades don't even look nice, it doesn't turn well at all. Yeah, um, I guess you could get this and that would be justified if you're just making like cube mosaics because they are only buck fifty each. But still it's awful 
But anyways, that just about wraps this video up. If you liked, please leave a like, comment if you feel so inclined, and subscribe for more content like this. See you guys later. Goodbye.